dear seniors and colleagues welcome to another episode of iin talk show with legends of neurology today our guest of honor is the legendary iconic figure major general s venkat raman one and only and sir is my guru so i will start by narrating a small vandana for him guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwara guru sakshat para brahmam tasmay shri gurave namaha sir is a iconic neurology teacher teacher of teachers he has trained so many of uh, neurologists from armed forces sir was born in trichy city on 21st december 1939 and did his schooling in sri ramakrishna mission high school chennai and is did intermediate from vivekananda college chennai later on he graduated from madurai medical college in 1962 sir would you like to say a uh, few things about your childhood your interest in your high school and what are your extra curricular activities uh i was uh, doing my schooling initial schooling elementary schooling in trichy where i was born i was there up to fifth standard after that next for the last year of my father's service we shifted to his place of work called nagapatnam a coastal city i had my sixth standard there and i after he retired we shifted to chennai where my eldest brother was employed with my brother in law also staying there so we all shifted to chennai and from in chennai i joined ramakrishna mission high school in seventh standard and completed my sslc those days for 11 years in the school at ramakrishna mission high school how about your uh, interest in the childhood days in college school apart from academics in which you have excelled what are the other hobbies you had hobbies and interests uh i was proficiency wise i was surprised when i came seventh standard to the eighth standard i was told that i had got a proficiency prize which i was not aware of that the person who stood first i stood second he came and told me you got a second prize that gave me an impetus to work in the subsequent years to see that i uh, uh, do well and then accordingly i put my extra efforts during my schooling days concentrated on my studies and i was able to get proficiency in all the years from 7th to 11th except from one year in the middle and uh, during my uh, period in the schooling also since my sisters were elder to me and they were all uh, to be married off those days for marrying it would be a necessity to sing to the bridegroom when he comes to interview so for that they were all trained in music by hearing them doing the music i could sing it myself so in that my father my parents said why don't you learn music so i started the first basics in the last year when i was at the nagapatnam town in 6th standard when i came to chennai i continued the music classes under another teacher and was able to complete my lawyer grade in diploma in music before i finished my sslc that's a karnataka music no sir would you like to give us a small glimpse of your talent sing is asking ah huh? sing would you like to give a small glimpse of your talent on in music ah uh, for all those who will not be able to <laughs> hear a classical enjoy a classical music i'll go for a classical hindi song janak janak tore paaje paaliya 
प्रेत के गीत सुनाए पायलिया जनक जनक तुर पाजे पायलिया रंग महल और रहन सुहानी रंग महल और रहन सुहानी चम चम नाचे मस्त जवानी मैं लहरों में खोया जाऊं मैं लहरों में खोया जाऊं ऐसे धूम छाए पायलिया जनक जनक तोरे पाजे पायलिया थैंक यू साहब थैंक यू वेरी मच सो यूर जर्नी इन टू मेडिकल फील्ड फ्रॉम द रामकृष्ण हाई स्कूल वाई डिड यू चूज जनरल मेडिसिन एम बी बी एस initially and uh, what were your uh, college experiences during my school days when the last year of my father's work was over he got employed as a resident engineer with one alagapachatyar in karaikudi which was about 200 miles from chennai he wanted to work because the last two of eight children that is my myself and my younger brother still were not at educated completely he went for work and there he is an engineer by profession he was uh, inspecting some building and had slipped and then fell down and broke his fracture femur and he was brought to chennai and he was in uh, the general hospital with the traction of those days you know it is a long traction not immediate operation so to help him i used to go and sleep in the hospital and when i just saw the hospital environment i thought i would join i would do medicine if it is better then i that is what uh, or did it furthermore my two sisters were married to doctors in the family okay. they were also a little bit of an impetus to me to see that you know i was to go to medical college with that in only in the next two years in vivekananda college those days we had to go to intermediate two years before between school and medical college i took though i was good in mathematics i good took natural science which was a, important to go into medical college seat i took natural science physics and chemistry group and did reasonably well in that to get secure seat in the first year itself after the intermediate what wonderful sir we we have some pictures of your uh, early life your parents and uh, your <coughs> college cricket team and may i ask uh, asmita uh, show you... some pictures uh, that's general venkatraman for you a very very renowned neurologist and you can see the school days dr sundaram ayer his father and uh, with his niece and dr saraswati mahalingam younger days next sir was a best student in sanskrit also we have already seen his talents in music and he graduated from madurai medical college before his foray into armed forces medical services next well, sir is a player of cricket which i asked him and the our the experiences in sports and uh, other extra curricular activities and we can see next you can see the team winning a trophy and uh, he must have played at uh, at a higher level there in school because he's seen an annual sports day next and that is a madurai district cricket team where general venkat the scene and i know him playing cricket when i was his resident in uh, army hospital and when i was doing my md next so you see that here sir is being bit farewell to join army so at this stage we'll go back to sir and ask his experiences and why he joined army medical corps and it was a 
war time he is joined as an emergency officer and call of the nation sir can you give us some experiences now why you join army and what are the initial days as a captain how you where all you worked uh as i was doing my house surgency which was required before going for any post graduation or state service the chinese war of 1962 started i was in the middle of my house surgency secondly uh to be sorry to say i may not be able to correctly say that we as a backward community were looked very uh downwards as far as post graduate examination and other sanctions were considered by the dravidian government in tamil nadu at that time so second thirdly was even if i joined i was not likely to get a post graduate course immediately second the state was giving a meager 325 rupees as a civil assistant surgeon but as far as the army information was concerned i was getting 560 as a left in trial be getting so these were the two things and uh, then they said if you offer for the army the state sends some notices that we will send you preferences for post graduate examination or also we will give you preference for permanent uh, job in the state government so these were the impetus to just join army for a few years and then stay and then i had come back but once i joined the army the state as usual political leaders or they they broke all the promises so i thought i would stay in the army and continue rather than going back to the state and so i continued it now you had a very illustrious career in armed forces sir as a captain as a major as a lieutenant colonel as a colonel brigadier and major general and uh, you have been uh, in an, a, a source of inspiration for so many of younger uh, doctors there and why did you enter medicine and uh, your your choice and where did you do your medicine and uh, what are your experiences while doing general medicine yeah, down one light uh, i as i said i i would have been a surgeon i had been left to myself but in my final mbbs for all your information though ever today i am a medicine consultant and a consultant in neurology retired i failed in my first attempt in medicine <laughs> that was because of a clinical examination mistake of not doing the investigation at that time which was expected of us as final students so i had to appear reappear for a medicine so i am a medicine repeater for all information of all of you unbelievable, unbelievable. but in the second examination they gave me a neurology case once again and then said the examiner said uh, when i how do you examine the cranial nerves when i told them in detail he said i am saying why did you fail in the last attempt i said sir i came to you all only as the examiners in the last examination also <laughs> now perhaps i have performed better to pass the exams that's the day i decided i will take a revenge on the medicine instead <laughs> of going for the surgery which was probably my uh, first choice had i gone through in the first attempt in my mbbs sir in uh, afmc where you did your medicine you have really Uh, done very well and you had an illustrious academic career there and you have been selected as a clinical tutor just tell us sir, something about the afmc setup how the uh, the doc- doctors are selected for doing this specialty because nowadays everybody wants to join army uh, but they are afraid of their future but you are an the example army for the specialist courses they uh call for those people who have taken permanent commission i joined as an emergency commissioned officer i appeared for the permanent commission exam i qualified in reasonable high rank plus after that there is a qualifying examination to go for medical i mean uh, specialities in that examination also i came second and i was offered uh, uh there are four subjects medicine surgery midwifery and preventive medicine which is important for army they said you can go for any of the specialties you want then but i chose medicine 
In those days, medicine in the AFMC, we had to join first. We were given three months to four months of intensive training as a post MBBS students. And after doing that, there was a preliminary examination based on which we were all posted for further another 10 months to command hospitals in Calcutta, Pune, Delhi, and Lucknow. I, since I performed well there also, I managed to remain in Pune for the remaining 10 years, 10 months training. And again, we all come back to the last four months for the final examination to Pune. And all of us go through the final uh, help. And then finally, the examination is called grading examination, which is done. In the grading examination also, I stood second and I was, because of that, they select the first two people as clinical tutors for about a year to two in the college to train the students, undergraduate students. I did the job of a clinical tutor for one year, after which I was posted to Delhi Base Hospital. In Base Hospital, I came across from Army Hospital Colonel Suri, my first neurologist who qualified as a DM from All India Institute. He was there in Delhi, but during my uh, training as a medicine also, we were rotated to neurology with, where he was at Lucknow for a short while. At that time also, he said, look, Venkat, you look interested in neurology more. And when I came to Delhi, I came in more close contact with Colonel Suri. I think he was instrumental in inducing me to go for neurology. He did from All India Institute as the first person from uh, neurology along with Dr. Gauri Devi, whose talk is going to come in a few days. And uh, second was Vijayan. And in between there was one PKCT from uh, uh, Ames, who did uh, his specialty, not DM, but he went on study leave abroad and then went to Canada and got from Buffalo his training uh, certificate in neurology. And on as on the army list, I am the third from All India Institute. Overall, before me, it is Colonel Suri, Colonel Vijayan, Colonel B.R. Kumar, and uh, Major, uh, Brigadier Mayor Rana later on, at that time I was Lieutenant Colonel what qualified. I was proud practical purposes, the fifth qualified DM neurology from armed forces. And uh, what is your number in country, sir? Because this was 75 to 77, you did DM in All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Yeah. So you must be in the earlier three, four people who have graduated from All India Institute. Uh, when I did my DM from there, I had uh, so, uh, Dr. Sumedha Patak was the pro uh, professor and head of the department. There was a Dr. Navanihal Singh who was an uh, electrophysiology expert. And there was Dr. Virmani who was basically a MRCP and uh, she was a psychiatry specialist, but he had been a staff in the department. So these were the three people. And then uh, there were uh, four of us were there, Dr. Saraswani, Dr. Das, who is in Hyderabad, myself and Dr. Amita Verma joined later on. We were four in my batch. But six months later, Sumedha Petak, uh, Madam died, unfortunately, and Virmani took over. And after that, Dr. Gulshan Ahuja joined. So I spent my uh, training under Virmani and uh, Dr. Kulshan Ahuja, who were my examiners also, and who were also uh, uh, instrumental in training me. Those days, what was happening was all the civil trainees were doing were for three years, but I had only two years study leave as an army candidate who were working free for our All India Institute. So, they had no problem of accepting reasonably good army candidates for DM. So I did in two years ahead of one year ahead of Amitabh Verma and Dr. Mohandas, who did join with me in that year as a DM neurologist. During that period, I had an interaction with the neurosurgery department. Great persons, Professor P. N. Tandon, and Dr. Banerjee, Dr. Brahm Prakash, and Dr. Ravi. They were the staff in uh, neurosurgery department. 
one day even doctor uh, when i was a resident i went and saw a case of a, a sinus injury sagittal sinus injury and i called dr prakash nath uh, tandon he said venkat there is nobody else you come over to the ot and uh, help me in operating on these people and i had the privilege of even going and helping him on that operation it sir was such you were nice uh, in those days you were doing even uh, carotid angiograms sorry you were doing carotid angiograms sir that yeah time. those days we had to do the carotid angiograms with ourselves and uh, that was with just a needle and then it was with the middle uh, of uh, taking you know quick uh, thing one two three three films one for immediate injection one for arterial phase and one for venous phase and all that was done under professor uh, uh, lady i forget her name what is that sumedha Uh, 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 the, the neurology professor, she was a terror. We had to uh, okay, for sir. going for our neuro neuro radiology classes. We had to be uh, very very careful. And Doctor Banerjee had a nagging idea, a nagging uh, way of getting things out of a trainee to say what is to be there in neurology. those so, days there were no ct scan ct scan came yeah. to the first ct scan came to all india institute in 1977 or 78 only before that we all we were all belonging to the new huh. encephalography and angiography yeah new encephalography sir that's correct and you taught us also new encephalography is such a terrible painful <laughs> investigation to do as well as for the patient Uh, you know one neurologist sir who has gone through all stages of development in advances in neurology you have been a so great researcher mr from all stages of development neurology has gone through uh you have seen all well, the stages yes. from the uh, you see that the uh, angiography of carotid uh, to neuroencephalography had... mri all things you have seen those are initial mri experiences yeah. yes uh first mri came up in the in mass in uh, delhi under the armed forces uh, umbrella it was a huge machine and then you know you had to send people with a long uh, appointment and come back even the first training i think was it was uh, uh, sharad jori sir huh sharad jori jori was my trainee but yeah. then the officer in charge of it was a jena sir jena sir orissa man orissa man who could who had just started uh, come back from the training for abroad and run the mri machine on that first mri i gave my first trainee in uh, neuro uh, md medicine and md medicine that was colonel jori who also did his training from all india and stood a subject of the spinal cord lesions non compressive lesions mri findings and then the second was of course you i gave again my interest of uh, when i picked up interest in neurocystis cirrhosis which mirmani prompted me to do for my uh, dm uh, dissertation work i picked up those days it was a hand picking up of subcutaneous nodule and other things and on papillary demand picking up neurocystis cirrhosis cases there was no ct findings there was no mri findings on those days so i took up my interest and i followed it up in the army first posting was my first posting after dm was to the lucknow where i had a good liaison with the medical college dr devika nag dr uh, chabra was the surgeon and dr dave professor dave respectfully was the head of the department of neurology who could help a lot i was given the status of a professor of the college and uh, given all facilities we used to run the clinic for md post graduates in lucknow weekly regularly under the aegis of the professor of medicine dr n n uh, sharma at that time and and gupta sorry and and gupta M yes excellent sir you you so had five very... years i was there in lucknow then another seven years uh, after that six years in lucknow i went to kolkata once i went to kolkata i became uh, i was uh, eligible for becoming a full colonel and advisor in neurology and then they posted me to Ch delhi where i reached back in 1987 
from 1987 till almost till my retirement in uh, 1997 one year before that 1996 i was in delhi i had uh, developed an interest in uh, infections of the central nervous system and cystic sarcosis especially tuberculous meningitis which are more of the cases and uh, that time in uh, delhi we had uh, four uh, people with me as head of, i was the head of the department four people colonel damija colonel uh, sancheti colonel uh, ak roy uh, rana sir. colonel malhotra wing commander ak roy all these people there with were there with me for five to six years when i was there at the head of the department and we produced a multiple uh, number of uh, we went to all the conferences both the medicine as well as neurologists and presented papers out of the work done in army hospital maximum number of publications almost about 75 plus were published when i was there in army hospital phenomenal sir we were uh, experience <coughs> with the praziquental albendazole first uh, trial invest uh, clinical trial in army hospital yes, sir albendazole trial uh, i i did the trial of albendazole versus praziquantel i gave it to one of my trainees who was one year junior to you that is uh, dr geeta duggal and she did that but somehow it could not be uh, uh, printed for very many reasons and what i found was that praziquantel was equally uh, good in uh, doing it but unfortunately praziquantel was very costly and albendazole was cheap and then it was more useful and easily available and less of uh, side effects were there for uh, albendazole sir you are very popular in delhi neurology association you are the only officer from armed forces army medical corps to become the president of association of physicians of india and indian academy of neurology so it's phenomenal how did you reach that and what was uh, your experience as a president of api and iim uh as soon as i finish my medicine examination there was always that information there that all of us should become members of api so i uh, very early i became an api my api membership number is l750 now it goes in five figures so i was one of the very early uh, uh, persons to become a member from armed forces and i contact i started you know the at that time in the army my from my grading to the special, i mean uh, classification before five years it is there i w- there was a, a, a message that unless you publish a paper you will not be classified so my first paper was published from delhi when i went as a medical specialist graded medical specialist and the subject was the hepatic antigen in uh, uh, sp- uh, biopsy liver biopsy specimens identifying it was published under the senior consultants cover first thing so that gave me an impetus a lot of impetus to write and attend conferences slowly by attending the conferences i entered the uh, executive committee i became cme organizer and gradually at that time delhi also started a chapter in uh, api of which we were one of the uh, chief people who started it i i represented it from the army side so i became uh, prominent in uh, api continued in executive committee for over 10 years and then i was awarded sherly oration in which i did essentially the neurosurgeries only and uh, in nine ultimately uh, after going through all this i was uh, elected president of api in 2002 and subsequently uh, in 1992 the common uh, meetings of nsi only was going on there was no iin at the time in 1992 i think somewhere in manipal there was a problem that you know uh, there was a understanding in neurological society that only one year neurosurgeon will be president one year neuro- neurologist will be president but one neurosurgeon famous neurosurgeon i don't want to name him he broke the tradition and wanted to become 
a second year uh, following a neurosurgeon to become a, a, a president of the NSI. That, <clears throat> that created a little confusion and Professor J.S. Chopra, Dr. K.K. Sinha, Dr. Uh, uh, Krishnamurti, Srinivas, they were all in the thing. They were all very agitated that uh, the neurosurgeon withdrew their normal custom. They said we should form our own neurology society. And right in Manipal, we all sat down and started a small this thing. So from then on, I was almost, uh, I mean, almost what? I was one of the founder members of IAN as, as such. And in the year 2004, they just offered me, sir, nobody will contest. You become the president. And I became the president and uh, uh, conducted the affairs of the new Indian Academy of Neurology in 2004. In 2004, my president, uh, uh, presidential oration, that was in Cochin, and Dr. N.S. Wadia was asked to chair the session. And my subject was the contribution of armed forces to the neurosciences in India, because in everywhere, whether it was P.N. Tandon or Banerjee or any other neurologist, they were only talking only of what the civilians have done and they have never bothered about what armed forces have done. I think I will take the credit that I first brought it to their knowledge by producing the data of what armed forces has done in my presidential oration in Cochin. And Vadia came out and finally, after I finished the thing, he said, Dr. Venkat, it's tremendous. I didn't know Army had so much to offer to the neurology. I am certainly not new, and I'm very glad that you brought it out to the knowledge of everybody comes from. This Academy of Neurology formation in 92 in Manipal. Yeah. And subsequently, your association with it has led to you becoming the president of Indian Academy of Neurology. Uh, I, I will tell more about that. In 92, it was decided that C, uh, Krishnamurti Srinivas was the senior most. Mm. And he was made the first president and to take over the situation, uh, uh, society and do it. He did it. And in the second year, the, the uh, supposed to be uh, meeting was supposed to be held in Patna, Ranchi. KK Sinha was trying to do that. He could not do that and all. And then subsequently, all the seniors, you know, uh, who were there, they were all becoming presidents one by one, one by one, one by one. And uh, the rules and regulations were formed formally in this thing, but in the subsequent IAN meetings under uh, Dr. Krishnamurti and Chopra and other things, the final formation was done. And Chopra did all the society registration and everything in Chandigarh. And then we all continued and uh, continuously we made efforts every year to do the, the neurological uh, these things. And uh, I think uh, the, down the list, it is KK Sina, V. Srinivasan, V. C. Katir. They were all GK Ahuja, Jain, Maheshwari, and uh, Virmani and all. They were all in, uh, in the line for the uh, continuation as a IAN neurology. And also subsequently, uh, Dr. Wadia's protégés, you know, Dr. Bhim Singhal is one one I cannot forget mention. He was also instrumental in doing the continuously the this thing. Then subsequently, the next generation, my age equivalent or slightly even younger than I am, it was Khadelkar, Katrak, Nirmal Surya, and Panagreya in uh, Rajasthan. So many others came, joined, and actually started taking the IAN forward. And then uh, 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 there was one more person from uh, before me. He was president and secretary. He was from uh, uh, Bangalore Institute of Mental Sciences. And he became secretary and president before me. I became the president. Uh, and Devika Nag was also one of those people who had helped in all these requirements. So oh. down the line, all the people who had been uh, heads of department of importance in civil had all had that chance to become presidents and continue the, this thing. And uh, finally, I was rather, no, I was very, not very clean that I should become president, but they said, 
everybody has become now you have done so much you must become no president in 2004 they appointed me i think following me it was prabhakar of uh, chandigarh who became president and then right, sir it's a very good start to years years. now once you put on a patri a train it goes on itself you see <laughs> yes <laughs> like that it has been now going on for 30 years and it has made a lot of steps and now it has gone beyond uh, many many heights which i don't think that we i oversaw at that time it's indeed a pleasure to remember all those tall words whom you have mentioned but we would like to see some videos and some more pictures and uh, uh, asmita may we have uh, some pictures and some videos so these are the pictures when uh, captain s venkatraman in the early army years you can see and he has got many laurels to his credit and he is a vishist seva medal for his exemplary service in armed forces next sir as a captain you can see the ang venkatraman next sir is a clinical tutor in afmc you can see his name as a clinical tutor the clinical tutorship in afmc is given to the person who is very meritorious in his md studies next and sir got married to madam ganga we we lost her and due to covid last year the covid pandemic time and sir is blessed with two daughters we'll see their photographs in due course next and these are the gayatri and bhavani who are who have become uh, uh, rich in uh, uh, their careers one has become a phd and bhavani has done her mba iim and she is in singapore gayatri is looking up father she is in chennai next and you can see a sir and madam and sir has to change his uniform to navy for a year and for few years before he again become major general but he stayed in delhi and sir is with family and both daughters next and sir has a uh, celebrated 60th birthday and also 80th uh, the birthday we all went to chennai next so these are the family grows the uh, the uh, both the daughters got married and uh, sir is blessed with grandchildren can we have some videos and uh, can have general kk from armed forces general s venkatraman has been my teacher in neurology for the last four decades or so when he was preparing for his dm entrance examination at base hospital delhi i had just joined the indian army and when i was preparing for my dm entrance examination for aims i came under his training at army hospital delhi cant and thereafter he has guided me in the good practice of neurology thereafter the art and science and the academics of neurology i learned from him this teaching has stood me in good stead in imparting good training for all the dnb residents that come for training under me at sdmh jaipur jil venkatraman has been an academician beyond comparison in year 1995 he was the editor of the api textbook in which one also contributed in a chapter in neurology that is even after he had retired he was active as a clinician as an academician beyond comparison it is with a great sense of gratitude that i thank general s venkatraman for making me what i am today i owe a whole lot for what he did for me and for my future too in the end i'd like to wish him the very best in the years ahead may god bless him and his family we definitely miss mrs venkatraman who was a gem of a lady in the end god bless you sir thank you very much once again jai hind thank you kk sir thank you very much so sir general kk was with you now he is presently the director in santokh badurlabji hospital in jaipur 
and another colleague of yours who was with you in uh, army hospital delhi camp that is uh, dr sancheti will uh, be uh, saying few things about your association sir may i have dr sancheti please general venkat raman is no oh i think we have some problem in the so let's see for uh, general kumar velu short narration of my association with the legendary neurologist in olive green uniform he is none other than veteran major general s venkataraman which is seva medal my first test with this famous personality was way back in 1977 when i was in lucknow as a green horn in the olive green later in 1990 i interacted with him when i went to delhi to appear for the entrance examination for dm degree in the prestigious all india institute of medical sciences he was affable affectionate and with a ever helping attitude he ensured my easy passage into my professional career nearly a decade later i had the privilege of serving under him as a neurologist in command of the eastern command kolkata when he was the commandant he was a friend philosopher and guy he was acting like good morning everybody i am major general sharad jauri i am a neurologist retired from the army now working in a private medical college as a consultant neurologist and professor i met general venkat raman way back in 1984 when i joined the the medical corps and i was doing my basic course and during the part of the basic course we had to work in command hospital lucknow then for a short project he was there as uh, the oic of the medical day when a neurologist and he was that uh, that was the first time when i met him as a young colonel venkat raman and since i was interested in medicine from the beginnings at that time i was just mbbs so he guided me how to proceed ahead and i was very much impressed by his zeal enthusiasm for teaching and thereafter uh, we separated in different uh, units and then i met him in again in 1985 when i was doing the, uh, my command phase and finally after when i was doing my md medicine from army hospital then army hospital uh delhi then uh, he was there as oic of the neurology department and i was uh, fortunate that i was his first student of md medicine and i had uh, what i learned uh, from the nuances of medicine as well as neurology is from him he is the one who taught me from just like uh, like a child how to proceed how to behave with patients how to look after them how to interpret signs and uh, uh, my topic was uh, that time uh, the mri evaluation of uh, of myelopathies and myeloradiculopathies that was my thesis topic at that time i didn't know what is mri and there was only one mri way back in 1987 in whole of the india and that was it at inmas institute of nuclear medicine and allied sciences we had to take our patients there then do their mri and come back and i was fortunate that it was i could do that span year study on mri under his guidance i'll tell you one very important very interesting aspect that uh, when thesis was complete and i he showed me that asked showed me asked me to show his uh, my introduction and the review of literature i wrote something that time there was not much of computers and all so we had to write it down and uh, by hand and then show him <coughs> so he was not very satisfied then he said okay do this thing that thing changes i came back again again he was not very much satisfied then uh, he said okay come to my house and then i went in the evening to his house and then okay now he so sir we have all had a uh, very wonderful experiences i would uh, like to narrate one of mine when i did thesis under you you have used to sit every week with me in the evenings i am correct and finally when the thesis book is bound and i brought to your house at 8 o'clock in the night you saw that and you called madam ganga said give gorthi dinner i said didn't you know that uh, sir is 
uh, looking at my thesis and saying, have dinner. Then I did take meal with you. Then he show, you showed me last few pages were upside down when they bounded it. You said, Bachu, now you go and get it corrected. So that's the affection you have shown us. And as a teacher, as a, a guide, as a mentor, as a philosopher. So that thank you very much for uh, with us, for me and Jory. You are our uh, 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 great teacher. So what is the uh, life after army? When compared to army life and how did it go off? And still you are very active in Chennai. So let's have some, some glimpses of your experiences post army versus army. I retired in 1997 and moved over to Delhi. I was making a flat in the Air Force and Naval Officer Society. It was not ready. So I moved to a civilian uh, accommodation. <clears throat> in uh, next day itself, I had an appointment with uh, uh, Mata Chanandevi Hospital, where they ready, where they could select me as a first neurologist. There were nobody at that time. I stayed with that hospital till 2013. That is about 15 years where from the scratch, I built up the neurology department there and Dr. Reno Achstani had joined me after a couple of years. And then I, uh, it grew up to a full-fledged department of neurology with the support of neurology and study. And then I moved out of 2013, I moved out and I started practicing in the private hospitals which were coming up newly. They said that, sir, we want some neurology support. So I worked on all these hospitals, private hospitals, till about 2019. And my wife said at that time, she was very old, 78. She was not able to stand the temperature of Delhi. She said, we must move to Chennai. And on her insistence, I moved to Chennai in 2019, November 28 to a flat below my daughter's. And then my daughter is now looking after me. I'm staying in the flat after my wife died in uh, two September 17, 2020 due to COVID. I'm staying alone here and uh, spending my time looking up neurology, looking up newspapers, looking up other things like a trainee almost. And my daughter is of immense help. My both the daughters come and help me out. I, I think I must mention one thing which I must have forgotten in the middle. My wife had been a great help to me right through my life, right from the uh, time I did the DM because I got married and went for my DM. My two children were very small. She used to type all my uh, notes, which I used to bring in handwriting. And she completely typed, draft typed my uh, dissertation work. And she gave me complete support as a lady to do my DM because of which I think that I am greatly indebted to her for her loyalty to look after the children and help me do my examination. Yes, I miss, but everybody has to go one day from here. We have to go. And uh, well, after that now for the last three years, I am just spending my time literally as a complete uh, retired person, not doing much of any work except those people who consult me on the phone from over Delhi, my old patients, and somebody locally here in the colony asking me. I'm leading now a retired life for the last two and a half years now. Sir, we, you have been uh, given an award by uh, Sir President Kalam. Award. And uh, then you have been uh, <coughs> felicitated by, I think, Professor Tandon and when you were the president and we have some photographs uh, uh, can, we, can we have that photograph uh, that was in 2008 in uh, oceanic asian conference combined with the 16th iian conference i was awarded um, uh, the thing for a long time work in neurology and i didn't have much interaction personally with dr kalam because he was asked to come as a chief guest and he presided over the function and he offered the trophy, except that I didn't have much of a thing with uh, Dr. Kalam. And uh, secondly, the other thing was in 2012, I think that uh, 
Dr. Tandon uh, has given me on behalf of the Next. Mm -hmm. Neurology uh, Society of Delhi. This is that. Uh, this is the what that I had in 2012. I think yes, the Delhi Neurology Society recognized me for my uh, long-acting work on the neurology, and Professor Tandon was on the chair to present me this this thing. Other than this, I I do not have much of an interaction with Kalam as you asked whether I had known him very well. Sir, uh, X, we are uh, coming towards the end of the, our uh, interactive talk show. What is your uh, advice to the young neurologists? Where do you see the future of uh, Indian neurology? Uh, as a neurologist, I only uh, advise mainly the armed forces people because I can tell them more uh, freely than my civilian colleagues. See, practice in neurology, which is affordable, do minimum investigation, maximum treatment. And for my army colleagues, I would just say, please start uh, analyzing your work and publish papers. If you don't publish papers, people don't come to know about you more. People know you not by your face. Only when you say, they say I, and then to go off. But the papers and publications and speakings that you do remain permanently in the other's faces. So therefore, make attempts to publish your work and bring what the armed forces is able to do to the neurology society. For my civilian colleagues, yes, please be kind to your patients and do as little as minimum of possible as thing, and then uh, treat as many patients as possible. I never charged a single pie to my army veterans in my clinic at all. Thank you very much, sir. And it's an honor to host you. Uh, and uh, we are thankful to Indian Academy of Neurology and the president, Dr. Nirmal Surya, who has given us an opportunity to interact in this talk show. Can I have this last slide? Thank you once and all for all putting myself uh, on the. Uh, see, these are the. Uh, these are the. Uh, yes, this see, is my. This uh, is my dearest family. And the sir, you can see me, uh, Sharad Jori Aruna here with Madam. Next. Next, it's all, uh, sir, you're still meeting your friends from Madurai Medical College. This you is are having nice get together. School reunions. School reunions, uh, very nice, sir. Next. So it's in June, New Delhi 2016, next. So sir has done his 79th birthday in Chennai and myself went from Manipal to attend that. And that's where I saw Madam last and she was very cheerful in that gathering and we all enjoyed. And Dr. Devan was with me at that time. Next. So in front of the ancestral house in Trichuabal in 2006, that's where his fond memories we have cherished. And sir, with this, I think uh, I'll take your leave and uh, namaste sir, next. Thank you. Next.